So we have our study today is Salvation Boat. Salvation Boat. And I'm hoping that we will be able to explain that to you and give you a clearer idea of what that is all about. Salvation Boat. I want you to ask you a question. Why do you why do people become Christians? L let me ask you. Why did you become a Christian? Yeah? Or why does anybody want to become a Christian? To be saved. All right? So Anybody? Anybody else? Because want to follow God. All right? Anybody else? Jesus came to die for us. All right? So we have different reasons why we become a Christian. What do you think is the most prevailing, persuasive reason why people even consider becoming a Christian? All right? So you say to be saved. Salvation. Could I just give you, while I'm saying all of you all are correct, eh? you are correct. I want to give it a different spin. The reason why you became a Christian and why people consider in becoming a Christian is for the overwhelming reason of, I don't want to go to hell. If there was no hell, You understand? We're not going to be talking about, oh, I want to be saved. And I want to go to heaven. It is because of the presence of hell. Does that sound reasonable? Yeah. Right. That's why you want to be saved. That's why I said you were correct. But it is more pointed. If we recognize it because of what we don't want, we settle for the next. But if you get rid of the driving force, then you wouldn't really want... You know, we say because we love Jesus. I'm not too sure that it is really because we love Jesus. The reason why our children sometimes don't do what they tend to be inclined to do is not because they no longer want to do it and I must obey mommy and obey daddy, you know. <laughs> is what drives them from it. So, I want you to keep that in mind, that that is the major thing. However, we have stopped preaching on hell. Because it just doesn't sound nice. You're scaring people into salvation. But hell is real, and hell is a part of the discussion that we must have. So, we try to become Christians in order not to go to hell. What did God save us for? One of it is we want to go to heaven. That's what we say. We don't want to go to hell. Why did God save us? From going to hell? hell? Alright? Huh? Sorry? You, you, you said something about save us from ourselves all right yes because he loves us all right yes and again everybody is quite correct it is because he loves it because he's trying to save us from ourselves and, and so on but i want to give another spin on it <laughs> that god saved us so that we could save others Yeah. So let me see if I could. And that does not say what you said was wrong. So, so after all, it is would God take us from heaven? Because we all came really from God. So is it is it that He brought us from Himself, put us on earth to bring us back to Him? That sounds a bit. Um confusing to me that he would now take us from heaven bring us to earth to take us back to heaven 
This is why I'm saying God did not really design to take us to heaven. All right, I've seen somebody quizzical look on your face. So, follow with me then. God's original intent was not to take us to heaven, but to bring heaven to earth. Does that make sense? Let's see if this verse makes a sense. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 10. The Bible talks about our Father which art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. It says in verse 6, Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done where? On earth. As it is in heaven. I believe this was God's original intent. To bring the kingdom on earth. To bring heaven to earth. We were not supposed to be going back to heaven. So, even if you want to challenge that, I will keep with, 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 with that. But, but f follow along with me here. So, God had a kingdom in heaven. And he says, this kingdom that I have, I want this kingdom to operate on earth just as it operates in heaven. What went wrong? sin messed up the entire plan that God had which would have been a wonderful plan the garden of Eden would have been a wonderful place for all of us you did not have to get up Monday tomorrow to go to no work amen somebody <laughs> you did not have to be taking money to be paying all of these bills because there would have been nothing that you needed or lacked the garden of eden had everything adam needed even rainfall that wet the plants everything was there it was the most perfect of places that you could have ever found so God recognized that we have a problem. So he created what we call a salvation boat. Where you are saved to save others. Inside of this boat, our responsibility is to save other people. That outstretched hand. A person who therefore becomes a Christian... And makes no attempt to save somebody else is not fulfilling the will of God. They are failing on God's will, and I will I will answer that one a little bit later on. Are they a complete Christian? So, there are things that we lack so much in Christianity. And the amazing thing is there are so many people feel that they have arrived in Christianity. So, when you listen to them, you could tell that they think that they've arrived. And we're going to get to that a bit later on. God's purpose for calling you. This is what Christ said to some guys who are deceived. He said unto them in Matthew chapter 4 and verse 19, Follow me. And I will make you. What is it I'm calling you for? To make you what? Fishers of men. Notice he never said, follow me and I will take you to heaven. Follow me and I am going to save you. Follow me. And I will make you fishers of men. That's the purpose. That's why God saved you. Are you fulfilling why God saved you. L let me tell you what the danger of this is. Eh? So you are on this boat. Somebody reach out and save you. Peter, a boat comes along. One man is in the boat. God, Jesus Christ, sails up and meet you drowning. A group of us, all of us inside of here, drowning. He does something to save you. You are in the boat. 
that person now saves the next person who drowned in out there. All of us, our boat had capsized, and that person is now trying to save you. And then after a while, you start bringing people into the boat, and they say, you see me, me tired, you know, me can't save nobody right now. And I have a set of people who know that they are saved, sit down and save nobody else. Are you getting the picture? Right. That is the mess that we are in. Where there are so many people who are so self-righteous that know that they have saved. They don't care about anybody else in the water. That is like somebody who comes out of it, drowning and crying for help, and now that they are inside, they said, listen, I'm not risking myself, I'm not going out there, let everybody choose their, their own path, and so on. And they sit down quiet and nice inside of this boat. So, we have a, we have a dilemma. We call it selfish salvation. What do we call it? And none of us here guilty of that. <clears throat> At one point in time, that's right. Because we had this traditional Christianity. I go to church on a Sunday, I listen to this sermon, I put my collection, and I go back home. And I'm not coming back till the next Sunday. The rest of the week, I just doing as I like, I living as I like. I may not be doing any big set of sin and so on, but I feel as though me and God connected. I get up in the morning and I pray. Me and God have a good relationship. I do nice to people. And so therefore I am going to heaven. And God will be so pleased with that. While people in the water drowning and I'm doing nothing because I'm finding myself safe in the boat. I didn't hear that one. Eh? <laughs> so, somebody took the time to teach you the gospel and saved you. Therefore, some become a Christian and sit back waiting to go to heaven because they can't wait to go to heaven. I wish when I could die now so that I could just go to meet with the Lord. It doesn't work so, my brothers and my sisters. There's work to do. So I just live in to please my Jesus mentality. There's these people say, let everybody make up their own mind and their own way. I'm not forcing anybody. But here's what that says. It's sitting in the boat and say, let everybody who want to be saved, save. I'm not forcing anybody and so on. But... If you understand how the New Testament preachers were, they felt it incumbent on them to preach the gospel at all costs, even if they risked their life in doing it, because they knew they could not be in this boat, watch people sit down outside and be lost and be comfortable. Why is it somebody who is in a boat safe will risk their life to save somebody who's drowning on the outside of a boat why do you think they'll do that even if they can't go out there and swim they will call somebody else in the boat and say look somebody there drowning they would point and they will they would not say oh look somebody there drowning <laughs> they're not doing that we do that oh let's have a crusade Let's see if we could go out there and save people. We don't, that's how we do it. It's an urgency. There's somebody there and they're screaming. They can't swim. They can't save the person, but they will do something. And this is why I'm saying when we understand that, we will understand the passion to invite somebody to come to worship. To ask somebody, let's have a Bible study with you. Because it's urgent. Let's do something to save that person. Your phone's mobile data is turned off, so I can't help you. That's right. <laughs> so we'll do something to save people. And because we don't understand why we were saved, 
That's why we don't take saving souls seriously. We more concentrate on going to heaven. When that was never the design. Questions? Yes. Yes, the camera needs to, 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 to move. Yes. Well, um, I never saw so what teachers taught, to taught point. us. Taught us wrong. Taught us wrong. That's my belief. Because if you therefore are being saved to go to heaven, that's why we relax after we are saved. And that's why after a person is baptized and saved, their life comes to almost a screeching halt. Yes? No, you, you wanted to share? Or did I cover what you wanted to, to cover? You changed your mind? All right. Yes, anybody else? Any other question or comment that people want to make? Did I not tell you that this year we're going to change thinking and philosophies? Right. This is all part of the process of changing the mindset that we've had. We've had a lot of things wrong for so long. So you ask me, somebody asked me, I can't remember, what, I think it was Sister Michelle, asked me if I ever stay home just because or something so from, from church just because so after 40 something years of being a Christian I have not been faithful to God for 40 something years but I'll tell you this in 40 something years even when I felt far from God I was coming out and the only time I was telling her that I got married on a Saturday refused to fly on a Sunday for my honeymoon because I needed to go to church. Yes, sir? Huh? Because I felt it so strongly. And because there's a philosophy that I have inside of my heart from small, even though I don't, did not live up to it all my life, it's a philosophy that I hold. So I remember that the times that I miss, and probably there are so few of them, was if I'm in transit from one country to the next and I try as much as I could to land in time to be able to go and meet part of the worship. I remember I was going to Florida Day, land there and went straight from the airport to church. All my bags dragging going into the people them church building. Because I felt I needed to. But what drives that? What drives that kind of thing? It's because when you understand certain things eh? it's not about going to heaven it's what you do while you are here that matters and what you do while you're here means that you need to gather as much information as possible one of the things that i've always believed in is gather as much information on christianity as i can and i can't do it by staying home and singing psalms I needed to come and hear somebody teach something that I don't know. And so coming out was part of that process. Now, I go, coming out all those years to church, um, and even when I'm sick, I would come out, and the, the few times, I, even when I was in hospital and I took my surgery, um, from the time I was discharged from the hospital, and they even give me a chance my wife would remember when we were out of the country i took my surgery out of the country i go in with limping and and we go in on what is it baby we had to walk with support to go to church and sit down but i wouldn't go to heaven because of that because you can't come out to church every Sunday and say, listen, I go into heaven. No, it has nothing to do with that. But it is part of it. So when people just 
whimsically say, I ain't coming today, tired, don't feel like I go come next week, and so on. You know they don't understand their mission. You don't have to ask that. You understand me? When you are in a relationship with somebody, and every so often they have an excuse why they all look at me and all look at see each other and oh, you, you ain't going again, I ain't going to the cinema with you again, I go put that off and so on, keep putting it up. And you say, I still love him, I still love her. You best watch yourself. Something is wrong with that relationship already. God said, I will come and commune with you every Sunday. And every first day of the week, I will commune with you. And I want to have dinner with you. He called it the supper. The Lord's supper. And I would have bread and I'll have wine. Something to eat. Something to drink. And sit down. And this is to remember our first relationship. Called the Lord's supper. And you just flip, flip, uh, flippantly just say, I ain't coming today. Something is wrong with the relationship. So I need us to be able to understand that. So don't miss the boat <laughs> these two hands know what we're talking about um, uh, when you talk about miss the boat don't miss the boat so because that boat is what leads to salvation so we condemn the church and we say we don't like church we don't like religion we don't like this we, we don't like that and so on part of god's plan for this scheme of salvation is this system, this institution called the church. And you cannot deny that. You cannot get away from it. He has said that I am going to put a holding base for all saved people. Acts chapter 2 and verse 47. He is going to put inside of this boat. This boat here is what carries all saved people we have messed up the whole scheme of what god has concerning church but church is a necessary part of the salvation scheme Acts chapter 2 verse 47 the bible says praising god and having favor with all the people and the lord added where to the church who did he add there those who were being saved that's the boat but somebody has to stretch outside of the boat called the church to save those who are outside drowning and haul them inside that's the system so here's what it will what did jesus come on earth to do simple the son of man came to seek and to save the lost yes that was his mission question sir if you're in the boat yes you say you're saved mm -hmm. you saved one enter the boat yes so this church come like the boat it is and what make you feel that everybody in this boat save? <laughs> okay. Here, hear my explanation for that. Everybody in the boat saved. Follow me. Everybody in the boat saved. But not everybody in the boat safe. You understand me? And we think because we are safe, safe, because we are saved, that we are safe, we can lose our salvation. So that's why we have to be careful. Because you may find that in trying to bring people inside, that you can lose your, your security in the process. This is why the Bible says, in a great house, there are vessels of gold, there are vessels of silver, there are vessels of clay, some to honor and some to dishonor. But all of them inside of the same great house. An extra state. If you're in the boat, yes, and you don't hold on, and the waters are rough, you could get overthrown. Yes. Right? 
if you're whole on, right? Yes. Tight enough, you could be saved. Mm -hmm. But there's things you have to endure, things you have to do to reach that. To secure yourself. To secure yourself. This is why the Bible says, work out your own salvation but you with have fear to and be trembling. In the boat. Inside. Whatever it is. As long as you're outside, you know you're lost. But on the inside, you know you're saved. But you may not be saved. Yeah? So there are people who grab, okay, the Bible says they be baptized, let me just reach that far. I baptize now, I'm good to go. And then realize they're not. I will tell you this, eh? if I am in a boat, this is me. This is not Bible here now, me. What am I? What did I say? It is me, not Bible now. Right. So when I look at it, don't say that I start preaching this false doctrine. But if I'm in a boat, and I work in hand to pull those people out of the water, and it is strenuous, takes long hours, tiring, and as soon as you haul one in, you haul the next one in, and so on. And there are some inside who not lifting a finger. Pass me some water there. Sun hot, tired, thirsty. And you have to now go and pass water for them and then go back and save people. And then next you know they're hungry. You have to now deal with them, but they just sit down there because they saved. But when thing come and boat start to rock, and we have to now try and prevent those who save from falling outside. I am going to make a choice as to who I will risk my life and make effort for to prevent from falling out the boat. There are some of them should really fall back out. You understand? This is my personal belief. Eh? Personal belief. Because they are only occupying space in the boat. But I think there's a biblical verse to back up with that. <laughs> <laughs> because you weren't helping saving nobody but we taking energy to secure you and now the boat is in crisis you have to determine I will rather put out the energy to save those who have been helping in this train right but I, I, I'm sure that there is a biblical voice for it but I, I, just sharing that but you all understand where I'm going with this I ain't trying to insult nobody Trying to just explain, yes. Oh my goodness. <laughs> the Bible says if you go into a city and you preach the gospel there and they don't want you and they run you, go to the outside of the city, beat the dust of that city off of you, call that a day. Um, if I remember correctly, when the boat with, with Jonah, and when the boat was in, they had to throw stuff overboard to like... All the things that was keeping the yeah. boat down, that was of no value yeah. during this crisis, they say, let's get rid of it. <laughs> <laughs> Which comes back to our process that we talk about with this fellowship. There are some people that you need to throw overboard. The Bible says, deliver their souls to Satan so that they could be saved. Because when you start to lift some people and throw, go to throw them overboard, they say, oh, 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 o